Hello, my name is Kerryarth, and today we are going to take a look at more Death Guard, because we have more pictures of the upcoming Death Guard heroes from the Space Marine Heroes Series 3, which still technically not heroes this time around, more, more, I was going to say anti-heroes, not really heroes, just full-on villains, it's probably the way to put it, but we have more of them. We now know what pretty much all of them are going to look like. I will uh, stick a link to the other videos covering these guys in the description so you can take a look at some of the older ones. But these ones, again, I have to admit, I am pretty impressed by. Now, when we looked at the uh, the other one that was leaked last week, well, not leaked, it just showed up in a magazine and someone took a picture. Not really a leak. I really liked it because it was... It, it bridged the gap so nicely between the current Death Guard aesthetic and the older Plague Marines. The Death Guard have a habit of being a little bit over the top, a little bit fiddly, a bit too much detail in my opinion, and that particular Death Guard model absolutely nailed it. It was the perfect in-between point between the new and the old. I really, really liked it. And I have to admit, these guys, again, again, aren't too bad. They are not too bad. I will say, I think the, the middle one is a little, maybe a little busy for my taste, but it's still nowhere near as over the top as a lot of the Death Guard stuff has been. So, as you can see, we've got guy with flail. One ball of the flail seems to be a nurgling hanging onto the chain, which, again, if, you, if you're a big fan of the, of the old uh, resurgence of nurglings on models, then... You like that? I would prefer just to have another actual end of the flail to that one, personally. But it is a pretty cute nurgling, so there is that. And you could always just stick him somewhere else on the model, have him hanging off the haft of it or something, or off the end of the rather nasty-looking plague blade that he's got off the back there. But again, it's it's not too busy. It's not too over the top. There isn't too much detail. It's not like festooned with a bajillion chains. It doesn't have. 8,000 flies all over it, the armour is marked and scarred and obviously very Nurgle, you've got a bit of bone growth out of one shoulder pad there and a bit out of one of the elbows as well, but it's not massively busy. Once again, you've got a fairly, a fairly clear silhouette there on that model and again, the face doesn't look too unreasonable either, I mean... Yeah, he's got more mouth than most people, but it's not like it's massively it's not like it's massively swollen or infected. It it just it at least looks like they'd be able to function as a living creature, which let's be honest, some of the Nurgle stuff really it is just like how would that person even see for a start? But again, we don't have that with this guy. It's compared to a lot of the Death Guard range nicely understated but that's one of the things i like so much about it it is understated but in a good way it it bridges that gap maybe not quite to the same extent as the previous one that we looked at last week but still still it's it's nice it's pretty good it's reasonable but still a hundred percent death god you cannot mistake it for anything else but it's not massively over the top the helmet option i actually quite like as well it's, uh, again, some of the helmets can be a bit weird, but I quite like this one. It's funky, it's interesting. The middle guy is the one that I'm not 100% sure on. But to be honest, I'm only not 100% sure on him because of two things. Now, yes, there is a bit of chain going on, but I quite like the... Uh, I always forget what to call them. I always want to call them tabards, but I don't think that's right, because I think a tabard goes over like the, like your shoulders and goes down down as opposed to whatever it is at the waist like the kind of I, I don't know I don't know like chain loincloth whatever you want to call it I actually quite like it on this one because it's not again not too over the top it's not like the entire model is draped with chains you've got a bit between the legs and that's it the things that I'm not sure about on this one are again the nurgling on the top but that's just because it's like adding an extra it's adding like an extra weird thing on top of what I think otherwise would be a pretty awesome power pack. The shoulder pad with the face on is just making me think of the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film. I don't know why. I think it's the lips. The lips look weird. It's got lips. I mean, it's a face on the shoulder pad with like spiky teeth, but it looks like it has lips. I don't like that. 
I don't like it. It looks weird. I'm not on board for that. <laughs> it's like, I know that's a weird complaint to have, but it just looks... That looks, like, exceptionally cartoonish to me. And I don't like the fact that it looks exceptionally cartoonish because, for the most part, the rest of the model I actually do like. Not so sure about the teeth and the chest. Again, that's one of those things that has become very, very, I think, overdone for Death Guard. But you could easily green stuff that over and just stick a few part marks over into it. And I hit my chest when I did that. And it just made my voice go weird. And you can't even see me doing it because there's a picture of this instead. You could easily switch that out so that it doesn't have the teeth and it would I think it would improve it a lot. That's just that's just a personal preference thing. I know there are, you know, a good number of you who like the kind of teeth motif that goes on with a lot of the Death Guard stuff. It's just not for me. That's what I'd do with that personally to get rid of it. I'd, you know, just green stuff it over, maybe file it down, green stuff it over a bit, and you can get lots of nice pop marks and stuff that way to match the rest of the armor without having the teeth in the chest, which it's just it just doesn't do it for me. I like the like Plague bearer esque sword he's got. That's cool. I like the plasma pistol. I like the pose. The pose is decent. I really like that helmet. That helmet's really, really cool. I don't know what it is about it, but it has a it has like a quite a barbaric, barbarian feel to it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Iron Golems from Warcry for some reason. Quite like that. And again, the power pack's great. I really I really do like the ones that have all the extra exhausts and stuff. I don't know whether it's I don't even know whether you could count that as being particularly Nurgle, except for the fact that it shows upon you know a, a good number of Death Guard models. But there is just something that looks very steampunky and very like I, I don't know. It, it just has a certain look to it that I really, really like. I'd like to see that used on other stuff as well. To be honest, I'd like to see that spread out a little bit more. But again, that seems to be more of a Death Guard thing than anything else at the moment. It's one of the reasons I like Cipher's power pack so much. All the little changes to it look really cool. Um, there is the exhaust coming out of the other shoulder pad, which I'm not 100% sure on, just because the pose is, the pose makes the shoulder pad stick out, which makes the exhaust on the shoulder pad stick up almost straight, which gives it a weird sort of look to it. I think it would actually look a little bit better if the arm was down slightly, maybe just a little, just because then they'd be at a slightly different angle to the ones on the power pack. At the moment, it looks like they should be attached to the power pack, but they're not. That's just a small thing, though. To be honest, that doesn't bother me really all that much. It's just like a tiny complaint. The only things I think I'd do to this would be to do something about the face on the shoulder pad, just file it down, I'd get rid of the teeth on the chest, not have the Nurglings sitting on top of the power pack. I just wouldn't have it on there. Everything else I really like. I really like the rest of that model. Again, it's a nice, it's a nice meeting point between the old stuff and the new stuff. It's, it's not like absolutely festooned with stuff it still looks nice and it looks clean but it's still unmistakably Nurgle unmistakably Death Guard that's exactly what I want from this stuff the last guy throwing the classic stick grenade absolutely love that it's a little bit harder to see there is a bit of glare on the picture which kind of obscures some of the detail on the uh I'm on the shoulder pads which is a shame but to be honest, you can kind of get a little idea of what's on that shoulder pad from the helpful smaller picture that shows the helmet that that guy comes with, which I really like those helmets. Those helmets are, are cool for me. I, I like them. You can see that the uh, the backpack, not the backpack, the shoulder pad has got a couple of horns sticking out. It looks like some sort of weird, like, diseasey, browny colouring on, uh, on the shoulder pad. I'm okay with it. I like that. It's, again, not too over the top. That is quite a cool pose as well. I do like the pose on that guy. It's quite an action pose. I prefer the helmet to the bare head. I think the helmet... I think those helmets just look great anyway. And the head has got like a weird half-rebreather thing going on, which I'm not not a massive fan of. I like the detail of the, the kind of globules and stuff that are coming out of the armour, but the armour has still got that little bit of scarring and battle damage here and there, which is good. The... Little drips of stuff coming from the gorget at the front and leaking down towards where those where those canisters are on the bandolier across his chest. I really like that. And again, again, it's not too excessive. It's not over the top. It's not like dripping off the model and going all over the floor. It's just, it's just like a hint of the. It's just another hint of the absolute corruption of this guy. Like you've got the different parts on the legs, which 
again, give a nice indication as to what's going on just inside that armour. And you've got a little bit coming out of the gorge. It all just kind of adds up into a, oh, he looks okay. Oh, oh dear God, no, he doesn't look okay. Holy, oh no, what the hell is this? The little touch that they've put where you've got the little kind of exhaust coming out of the belt that is dripping some of the green goo down the leg. I really like that touch. That's a nice touch. That's a nice touch. I don't know how much that would affect mobility, but I don't really care because it looks kind of cool. And again, there's a nice recognisable Mark III thing going on with this armour, which I really do like. The fact that it's not too obscured, it's obvious as to what it is. Yeah, I, I like these. I like these. I, I, really, I really think that the vast majority of these... Uh, these Death Guard Heroes models, they've done a really good job with. They've bridged that gap nicely. They've made them you know, recognisably new Death Guard, but they feel a bit closer to the old Plague Marines to me. They have a bit less clutter, a bit less, a bit less busyness, a bit less fussiness going on. And I think they honestly benefit from that. They look a bit clearer. They look a bit more... They look more concise in a weird way. Like, even though the dude with the... With the stick grenade has got that chainmail, like hanging down that leg. It's not too much. It doesn't look like he couldn't move if he wanted to. It's not obstructing them. I think that's the that's the main thing. With a lot of the others, it feels like an obstruction. But these guys don't have that. None of their ornamentation feels like it gets in the way. It feels like it's reasonable and makes sense in the context of what they are, which are still superhuman warriors in powered armour. And I know they're slow. I know they're shambling. But you don't have to make them look like they can't take a single step without rattling so loudly you can hear them from like eight miles away to give the impression of that. These still, for the most part, look beefy. They still look chunky and not like they're going to be sprinting after you. They've still got the look that you want. They've still got the attitude that you want, just without all the extra gubbins that uh, we, we see so often with the Death Guard at the moment. I'm really liking these guys. I think they're doing a really good job with them. I have no idea whether these are going to be made available worldwide or, or internationally or whatever. Uh, there's not been any hint as to whether that would happen, as far as I can tell, anyway. I have seen a couple of like speculatory things, but for the moment they are, they are exclusive. And to be honest, I would... I would assume they'll show up elsewhere at some point. I would imagine they will stay region locked for a while, and then eventually they will they will shift out to the rest of the world, just like the season one did. Um, because whilst they have the essentially the illusion of only being available in one place, the value is higher. And once once all of that is died down, then they can go international and people still buy them. If it's all announced now, then it. They won't be worth as much to people. So I would suspect that we're going to see these released everywhere, sooner or later, probably later, but honestly worth worth taking a look at if that does happen, or unless you want to have someone export one over to you. That's another option. Liking them. Liking them a lot. Let me know what you think of those three in the comments down below. Do you think they're as good as the other one that we saw last week? The reception to that was almost unanimously positive, which was cool. Um, yeah, let me know what you think of these guys in the comments. In the meantime, feel free to click all of the things. Patreon, video, subscribe. Click them all if you like. Don't click them if you don't want to. It's entirely up to you. And as always, there is an affiliate link in the description, which will get you like between 15 and 25% off all 40k stuff if you're in Europe. You can click that if you like and that will help out the channel and you'll be buying stuff you'd buy anyway. No extra effort, just I get a little something for sending you that way. So that's a thing you can do if you choose. You might not choose to. That's totally fine too. Do what you like. It's your life. I will see you for the next one. Toodaloo.